Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Wednesday, May 8, 2013. I'm Kristen Folletti. The White House has named its first chief privacy officer, and they may be preparing an overhaul to surveillance laws. Join us now to explain more on what's happening in Washington is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Hi, John. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. President Obama has selected Twitter's legal director, Nicole Wong, to be the White House's first chief privacy officer. So, John, to begin, what can you tell us about Wong's background and the nickname that she's earned as the decider? It's a cool nickname. Uh, that came about from a uh, Times article, a New York Times article about five years ago, uh, and it featured her role as the vice president, as a vice, a vice president, deputy general counsel at Google. Um, so it also went on to describe how uh, it came about because she was man she managed a team of lawyers that was working with the company's engineers. They reviewed products before they launched, and it also uh, included those those reviews included uh, privacy issues, copyright removal requests. So that's how that came about. All the decisions that, that go about in, in looking at those things. Uh, most recently, she was uh, Twitter's legal director. Um, so it's an interesting, uh, you know, candidate uh, for this position that you know it will be coming up into this and. Uh, you know, a lot of questions are going to be uh, asked and a lot will be answered. What will the focus of her new position be? Well, this new position will be as a senior advisor to the chief technology officer, and its focus will be on the Internet and privacy policy. Now, how is Wong different from previous administration picks for department-level chief privacy officers? Yeah, well, definitely. Uh, previous picks had been uh, from department-level uh, Chief Privacy Officer, so you know, very internal. Um, the the difference here is that she's very immersed in technology issues. She comes from Silicon Valley, uh, functioning as a lawyer, so a lot of hands-on in the industry. You know, uh, real real issues. Uh, you know, not so much the the from the bureaucracy. So, you know, it's an interesting take, and a lot of people are paying attention to you know what this could mean. In the year that Wong worked at Twitter, what sort of notable accomplishments has she made that may prepare her for her new position with the White House? Yeah, Twitter was has been noted. They've been praised for efforts to protect uh, users in a number of cases where um, the, the reach of, of these requests for information were seen as too broad. That includes uh, police requests. Um, you know, and so on. So, uh, you know, the Electronic Frontier Foundation gives, uh, has a survey of tech companies called Who's Has Your Back, and they were one of the companies that got six out of six stars. So they get, you know, some notable, uh, you know, accolades from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Twitter's also part of a coalition that's been lobbying for a number of years to rewrite federal privacy laws uh, in order to require search warrants for email messages and other data that's stored on, on remote servers. So, um, you know, it, it appears that, you know, functioning within that, her background is very much towards, you know, the privacy side of things, and, uh, yeah, that's a good thing. Also out of Washington, the Obama administration is on the verge of backing an FBI plan for an overhaul of surveillance laws that would make it easier to wiretap individuals who communicate using the Internet. FBI Director Robert Mueller has argued that with the evolution of technology, the Bureau's ability to carry out court-approved eavesdropping on suspects is going dark. John, can you explain what he means by this going dark and what mandate he's pushing for? Well, there's a number of things going on here. You know, the Bureau by the day is, uh, is, is having less abilities in terms of, of the ability to, to actually carry out, you know, eavesdropping and things like that. You know, technologies evolve quickly. So, you know, he, he's looking towards expanding those powers, um, to being able to, to get some type of regulations, you know, in, their, in the pocket of the Bureau in order to execute some of these things. So that mandate that he's pushing for, it would require companies like uh, Google, Facebook, and so on. They would build into their messaging, the instant messaging and other systems of capacity to comply with, with all the wiretap orders. So, you know, it, it means expanded powers, expanded wiretap um, abilities, and things like that. The FBI's original proposal has since been revised. Can you explain what the revised proposal could mean for startups? 
Right. So uh, this revision, uh, the plan, it, it focuses on finding companies that don't comply with the wiretap order. So it's, it's, a, it's slightly different. Um, and so what happens is um, startups that have got that have a smaller number of users, they wouldn't have to worry as much about the wiretapping issues until that point at which they become popular enough that, you know, the Justice Department has you know a, a reason to look at them. And to make these requests, and then they would have to step into that realm where they would need to comply with, you know, the the, the regulations that are, are emerging here. Several top lawmakers have expressed skepticism, raising fears about innovation and security. Can you elaborate on their fears, John? Yeah. Uh, so there's a debate brewing about over the future of the internet, um, and you know, there's some that feel that this type of regulation may. Uh, um, hurt innovation, particularly in high tech. Um, they feel that innovations will, will be moving abroad, be developed there, where they don't have to deal with all these same rules, these same mandates. I'll give you an example of a scenario. Providers, in a one scenario, could be ordered to comply, and judges can then impose fines um, if they don't comply. And, and those fines start at about $25,000 a day, um, and that's what's being proposed. So. There's a notice period, a 30-day technical consultation period with the government, you know, uh, just everything you would imagine that would be in, in a highly structured government relationship, things that, you know, a small company is real hard to deal with. So, you know, not only that, these rules are expanded to cover VoIP calls. These are usually hard to intercept because of their nature. Um, on the security concerns, uh, there's concerns that there, there's back doors for hackers that could emerge from this. Um, you know, despite the newly allowed message encryption in, in these revisions, you know, encryption in the right hands is, is pretty fallible. Um, so there's no guarantees there when you unleash a mechanism like that. There's a lot of, of, of terms for concern there. So, um, you know, it's a long list and there's a lot really to be determined. Gregory Nojaim of the Center for Democracy and Technology said this of the proposal, I think the FBI's proposal would render internet communications less secure and more vulnerable to hackers and identity thieves. It would also mean that innovators who want to avoid new and expensive mandates will take their innovations abroad and develop them there where there aren't the same mandates. So John, what are your thoughts on his statement? Do you agree with his concerns? Well, we know that we see it. There's anecdotes about people leaving high tax states, high regulation states, and it's been going on for years. And I think that could easily extend to, you know, this notion of of, uh, the, uh, of countries and leaving for you know somewhere else. Um, it, I think that it, we may not even see some things come out at all. You know, the nature of the internet and the way it's it's come about, it's been pretty free. Um, in, in a lot of regards. So, I mean, I, I could see that. And I think that the security concerns are genuine. So um, th there's definitely that potential for, um, you know, people that want to exploit for cyber criminals and, uh, and people that are you know, nation states that are behind some of these, uh, these larger events that happen. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a genuine concern. And I think I agree with them on the whole. What's your opinion on the proposal overall? Would you support it or reject it? Well, I'm personally on the side of liberty. I'm, I'm a liberty guy. Um, again, uh, the internet was created and, and got to where it is, good and bad, by being you know open. So you know it's clear that that some powers are required to intercept communications between criminals and you know criminal groups and things like that. But there, there's uh, some grave privacy concerns here, and, and there's nothing mentioned in here about abuses of the system, and, and that's really a, a real big issue for me. Um, you know, who monitors the monitors? You know, what is built in there? And I think that's, that's a big concern and one that, uh, you know, hopefully comes to light uh, uh, pretty quickly uh, if this thing moves along much further. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your comments. Thank you. And coming up on News Desk, Google Maps gets a makeover and what Yahoo wants with Hulu. But first, founder and managing consultant of the 1610 Group, Scott Lowe, checks in to report from the Interop Expo out of Las Vegas.